So we're actually here to get some Santa pictures with some of our adoption animals to hopefully find them homes. What do you want for Christmas? Well, who is this one? This is Stubby. Stubby. Bearded dragon, six, seven years old. What? I think Stubby wants a new home for Christmas. I definitely think he wants a new home. He also mentioned something about mealworms. Mealworms? Oh, did he? Yes. Oh, I saw him whispering all of his wishes into your ears. So it was mealworms and a home? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. And then I was also told, okay, Stubby is going to chill with Santa for just a second here. I was told to come over this way and look in here. <gasps> oh my gosh. It's a whole litter of baby decays. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Oh my gosh, what do we do? Do I just, do I just grab them like this? They're so tiny, I don't want to break them. Oh my goodness. Okay, we are going to try to find all the babies and pull them out, I guess, will be the first step. Oh my gosh. Okay, so there's mom, and she's chowing down on some snails right now, but behind her, oh, where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Oh, there's a baby. Just to give you an idea of how tiny these things are. Oh my goodness. Okay, now we'll pull them out. Okay, Ed's actually with us now. He hasn't seen the babies yet. I'm assuming they're under there. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh, they are. Okay, water dish goes on the floor. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my gosh, they're so tiny. I'll take one. Nope. One. One here. Here's a mama. Oh, uh, mama and daddy oh no. right there. Trying to figure out what you're doing with their babies. Oh, yeah. Sorry, mom and dad. I'm going to take your babies, okay? Yep. We're going to take your babies out so that you, you don't, don't accidentally eat them. You also don't really want them. Hi, mama. You look fantastic. Okay. Where can we put these babies? Oh, I don't want to break them. They're so tiny. I can go like that. I'm not going to be able to stop them from doing anything. There you but... go. Have a baby decays. Oh my, oh my goodness, they're so little. All right, let's see how many of these we can find. How am I supposed to find all of you with how teeny you are? Four. Five. five are they escaping? Four. Oh, now we're down to four again? Okay, now we're back five. up to five. It went under that log if you want to, that half log. Baby, where are you? Oh, he's, he's there. Oh, I see you. Okay. Stuck under. Oh my gosh, you're sneaking under an adult. Oh, come here. There you go. So oh, six. Look at all of them. Okay, six. There's got to be more. Oh, there's another adult. There's another adult. Oh, and a baby next to it. Oh. I didn't even see you at first. Come here. Okay. Seven. Here's one of the original babies that we got years and years ago. Oh, cool. <gasps> oh my gosh. Abby, these are tinier than I ever thought. They How do I pick them up? They're so little. Now an adult, we have the three. We had started with four when we first got into decays. One of them never thrived because we got them as babies, but then the remaining three, one, two, I think the dad is with her. Oh, three. Oh, there's a baby. Seven. Uh, I think eight. Eight. Yeah, they're getting really big. They're doing really well. Now they're in our zoo. All right, now I'm going to have to go through the entire enclosure to look in every nook and cranny to find all of their babies. All right, so we actually don't know exactly how old these babies are. They could have been born just now, or they could be several days old and it just took us a little bit to find them hiding under their water dish. So we are going to offer them food right away in case they want to eat. They are similar to garter snakes in the sense that they're nature scenes, so they're in this, they're, they're actually pretty closely related to garters, but since they're so closely related to garter snakes, they can sometimes just pass away uh, in the blink of an eye, even with perfect care. They are, De definitely considered uh, quantity over quality babies from their mom. So we're gonna give them the best shot, but we're gonna put them in here. And if they want to eat today, they can. And what I have prepared for them today, if they want to eat, are earthworms and snails. In the wild, decays brown snakes are snail, slug, and uh, worm eaters. So this should be their natural diet. I ended up using, and this is a, a trick for if you're raising very small worm eating snakes, or really small snakes at all, use herb scissors to slice it up. Then you don't have to individually chop each piece with a knife. We'll put an affiliate link to these herb scissors in the description below. They really come in handy. So we're gonna take one of these teeny tiny pieces of worm. All right, and we're gonna hold it in front of the faces of these guys. If we can get one to eat on camera, they are so adorable to watch eat because their mouths are kind of curved differently than other snakes. And I believe that helps them suck the insides for, of a snail out of its shell. Oh, we are flicking our tongue. Do you want this? And I've also noticed, similar to uh, garter snakes, if they show any interest, a little trick to getting baby decays to eat is touching their lips with the food. That seems to initiate a 
food response. Let's see if it works out on any of these babies today. Well, it seems like none of them want to take the worm today, so I have a backup plan. We're gonna try a snail. Our adult decays love these. These are cooked snails, because uh, they're human grade and I can't find uncooked, but these just come from our local like Asian grocery market or grocery store. We use them for a lot of our animals here, but they are perfect for decays brown snakes because snails are their, or part of their natural diet. So we're gonna take this teeny little piece and see if any of the babies are interested in this. And it seems like they don't want to eat the snails either. So I'm guessing these are very, very fresh babies. They have no appetite yet because they're still absorbing the yolk inside of their bellies. Um, or my, my, not really yolk, just the extra nutrients from mom because this is a live bearing species. There are no eggs involved, um, which is why we're so surprised to see them today. So instead, what we're gonna do is set up these babies in a baby bin of sorts. I guess, should we do a bin instead of a big habitat? Because a bin, they'd be easier to feed. Probably. We, we could just put food on the paper towel Yep. and we could either split them up, probably split them up into two groups. Think that would work? Or I mean, if you're doing something this size, it can be easily one. All of them? Yeah. Well, I'm thinking one of those baby hog nose bins. We yep. could put them all in there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's just set up a single baby bin then and we'll put them all in. All right, I was gonna use one of the shallow hog nose bins, but even that has a teeny gap on top, which is just big enough for them to squeeze out. So instead, we're gonna use one of our baby bull snake bins and these still have a gap on top of them, but when they're slid into the rack, however, they're deep enough that the babies shouldn't hopefully even be able to climb up here. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping anyway. There is a little bit of a ridge right here though, so we're gonna have to make sure no climbing structures allow them to get up to that yep. ridge. So we're just gonna lay a paper towel down here, lightly spray it down, and they are such tiny little babies that shells are gonna be perfect hides for them. Anything else in back was just way too big and they would not ever feel secure in it, I feel. And we're gonna add some little leaves as hides in the middle of the enclosure and a couple of sticks. And there yep. we go. There is our Decay's Brown Snake Baby Rearing Box. Oh my gosh, look how tiny you are. Oh my goodness. I didn't wanna like hold them too much at first cause then I knew they wouldn't eat. Yeah. But since they're not eating anyway, now we get to ogle them. Hi, you are adorable. Look at that tiny little face. Yep. Oh my goodness. Okay, little baby going in. Baby one, two, three, four. <laughs> What's the whole lie? Yeah, he just looks like a poop. Oh, a little poop, baby. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Man, you guys are so tough to pick up. You're so tiny. Come here. Okay, fine. I'll just pour you into my hand. There we go. There you go. Yep. And eleven. Eleven little baby decays. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, yeah, this is plenty of room for all eleven of them. Oh yeah. And I think that'll work for a habitat while they, you know, raise up initially. Here's mama. Jeez. She's what is huge. the gents on her side? Oh, she's a wild caught. Ah, okay. Yeah, she was surrendered to our program, our rescue program, about a year, year and a half ago. And she's doing really well. Here's one of the babies we raised up. Here's ah, just the color difference. Yeah, here's another one we had raised up from back, since back in the day. And I was actually mistaken. Um, one more of those babies of the four original ones we had also eventually passed away just randomly. Um, so we have two of the remaining, f or of the original four, plus this female, which I presume is the one that gave birth. Do we have, of the two that we raised, that we've had for a long time. You're definitely a female. And this one, I think that one's a boy. Yeah, okay, so we, so we have a male and two. two females. So I guess technically this smaller one could be the mom as well. But for 11 babies? That's true, that's a lot of babies. She's uh, quite a bit bigger. It so. was probably her. <laughs> Guys, do you want a snail? Oh, you know you want it. Oh, we're interested, here you go. Oh, he's so oh. cute, oh my gosh. Look if they just start chewing. They do. Yeah, I don't know if you guys remember when we first got these decays, but man, they've grown huge since then. Come here. Here's the boy. He's probably the proud dad. Oh, there you go. Chomp down. Here's big mama. Mm, she's like, I just went through childbirth. Which is funny because she tried eating my finger when I pulled her out of the enclosure. So maybe she just doesn't want to be in a separate enclosure. Maybe. Okay, so mom doesn't want to eat. That's okay. We'll just offer food next time. Do you guys want some more? You're so big now. Now you guys are breeding. There you go. Do you want another piece too? Oh wait, your mom. Yeah, that's mom. There he goes. All right. So yeah, the decays here really do like the cooked snails, which are actually pretty easy to find at the Asian market. Um, so that has been that and earthworm have are their primary diet here in the wild they also eat a lot of slugs well 
we can get one that's escaping oh. already. Oh, good. So well, that's I, not going to work. That's not going to work at all. Okay, well, thank you for, I guess, showing us that this bin isn't going to work for you guys. <laughs> what should we try next? What we're going to do is move them back into this container, and this is actually going to be their baby rearing habitat. Yeah, these holes are super teeny. You're not going to actually get, they're not going to get out of those. Yep, and it's a flush, like, straight edge, so they won't be able that's, to climb up the sides. Like Spider-Man there for a second. Ooh, a Spider-Man decays? to the wall. Oh, a spider snake. Spider snake does whatever a spider snake does. He looks so offended right yeah. now. <laughs> all right, so we're going to keep them all in here, and we have a lid for it. And then this, we're actually going to rest on top of a ZooMed UVB light. And we found the ZooMed ones, they have a nice flat surface, and the surface gets to 90 degrees, which is perfect for a heat mat for snakes or baby snakes like this to rest right on top. We'll probably end up just putting half of this container on top so they can get to the other side to cool down. But it just so happens the ZooMed UVB hoods, lights, heat up to 90 degrees on the surface of the product. So it's perfect in this case. All right, it's been a few more days. So hopefully these guys are hungry now. We're gonna see. Where are all of you? I mean, I see a few. Oh, there's the pile. There you are. Oh my gosh, and a lot of poops. Okay, that means stuff is passing successfully. That's great. Oh my God. Look how tiny and cute you are. It's hard to tell until my fingers in there. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. I have snails and earthworms. I'm gonna try snails first. We'll see if they're ready to eat them yet. Hey guys. Oh, doesn't that smell good? At least flick your tongue and acknowledge it. Here, do you want it? Okay, well I'm gonna go through these babies and see if we can get any of them to eat. Okay, they've all said no to the snail, so we're gonna try the earthworm. Oh, that's a huge piece for them. It just looks like mush right now because it's chopped up so finely, but but I promise you it is a worm. Try the worm, it is tasty. All right, so what I'm gonna try to do next is actually drop feed them, which means I'm going to essentially drop in a bunch of food like this, that's all chopped up snail, and we'll add some chopped up worm here. And then we're just gonna leave them be because they might be intimidated by these big tongs. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised and I wouldn't blame them if they were. So we're gonna leave them be in here and then maybe there'll be fewer pieces in about an hour. Yeah, they say that if you breed decays, which not many people do, ours just happen to breed in our zoo, the toughest part is getting babies to start eating because they love snails and especially slugs so much in the wild. And well, it's December here, so there are no slugs to be found or snails outside. So we have to work with what we've got, which are the earthworms and the cookies snails from the Asian grocery store. They should still take them eventually once they're ready. What are you two doing? He's not food. Come over here. Your food's this way. And hopefully they'll eat something, but only time will tell. So I might leave them here for a bit and check back later. Well, none of the babies decided to eat today either, but that's okay. We're going to keep offering food, both earthworms and snails, every couple of days until they're ready to start eating. And once they take enough meals and we know that they are going to thrive, the ones that do, we will be rehoming them to our waiting list, which we started on Patreon. But here are the proud parents, the larger one being the mom and the smaller one being the dad, or I'm assuming he is the dad because he's the only male in the enclosure. And the dad here, who's looking at the camera, is actually one of those original babies we raised up years and years ago. And look at him! Now he's a dad! That is awesome! And again, the female was surrendered to our Adoption Island program and she we decided to keep so that we could hopefully breed them in captivity. And take a look! Now she has had babies Look how tiny they are compared to her. Oh my gosh. I still can't get over how little these baby decays brown snakes are. Kind of interesting. You may have noticed the babies have a collar around their neck and they tend to lose that collar once they become an adult. Nobody seems to know why the babies have this collar. Maybe it has something to do with camouflage, but they definitely all have it as babies, but not as adults. So kind of an interesting thing there. Instead of the collar, they gain the spots running down their back instead. As you can see, the baby baby here, who is so stinking cute, has a collar but no spots, and both of his parents have no collar but lots of spots. So yeah, kind of an interesting thing. So while I cradle this family of decays brown snakes, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was kind of a spontaneous one because we weren't expecting these cuties today, but here they are, 11 adorable baby decays brown snakes. These are awesome snakes, by the way, to have as pets. They make ideal pet snakes because they don't eat rodents. They eat, again, earthworms, slugs, and snails 
males, and due to their small adult size, which is only about 11 inches, that's about how big this female is, they only need about a 20 gallon long enclosure to be happy for for the rest of their life. We have our breeding trio in a 40 and they love it, but just a 20 long will do. Unfortunately, they're very hard to find captive bred. Not many people breed these because the babies are so hard to get started on eating foods for, in captivity. So if you see decays for sale, they're probably gonna be wild caught adults and please don't support the wild caught trade unless you are trying to breed them in captivity or use them for education, somehow using those wild caught animals to help protect and conserve their wild counterparts. But if you can find them captive bred, they are incredible little snakes. So we will be rehoming these to our wait list that we started on Patreon. Um, I think we're gonna give them a good three to four weeks for the babies to make sure they're gonna thrive because just like garter snakes, sometimes they just don't make it. Uh, they definitely breed for quantity over quality, but hopefully all 11 of these babies will make it so they can find wonderful new pet homes. And yeah, thank you again for watching. Thank you Patreon backers for your amazing support and we'll see you next time. Check this out. First, thank you Taylor for bringing in your slug colony for us to use as feeders. Decay. Smell it. Smell it. Stick your tongue out. Oh! oh, well, there he goes. Still eating. Doesn't care. So now what we can do is take- Don't you take his slug! No! Rude! Rude! So now what we're gonna do is take those slugs and send other things with them to get them eating other things as well, and then we can find them good homes.